<laughs> hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Optibottoms coming to you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys Power Pose Series 002 of the Iron Man Mark 35, otherwise known as the Red Snapper. First, as you can see, you got a really nice image of the Red Snapper in the background with the Iron Man 3 1 6 scale collectible figure information here, the PPS 002. Obviously, the title that says Red Snapper and the Mark 35. Come around to the uh, side here, you got that same bit going on there. Come around here to the back, you got the warnings that this does have small parts and it. it's an adult collectible and not a toy, so it's recommended for ages 15 and up. You got that same bit on here, but you also see that the left arm kind of reaches around to the opposite side now it is a slip cover so you just slide this up removing it and you got the open window which displays the figure within obviously it's not there because I don't want to spoil it for you but it's much larger than I thought it was going to be and just in general this power pose figure is a lot better than the first one that we got that one being the mark 42 which had very limited articulation uh, you had some joints but they just basically just like rotated they didn't do anything so there you have that you got the iron man two or three logo there come around here to the back you got a really nice image almost looks like something that jarvis would be having going on with his computer programs or something and it says hot toys that it presents the power post series so beyond that that's about it for the packaging really nice i do like them it is very similar to what we got previously with that mark 42 power pose uh figure so getting this all in here so you can see it i guess beyond that though that's it for the packaging so without further ado let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is all right guys so here we have the iron man mark 35 otherwise known as the red snapper opened up and out of its packaging and if you were on the fence about the whole power pole series I can totally understand it, especially with the Mark 42. While that's a great figure, it really is designed just to have two poses. The standing pose with his repulsor out, kind of blasting, and another one where he's flying. I'll bring that in and I'll show that here in a little bit, but if you were worried about how this one would turn out because of that one, I can tell you right now, do not be concerned. This is almost about as close as we're gonna get to a movie masterpiece version of this than I would really expect. I mean, it's absolutely impressive. The articulation on it is leaps and bounds better than what that Mark 42 one had. Now, uh, kind of straightening out his leg and just setting him back here. Uh, taking a look at his accessories, uh, they, are, they are very limited. You get the, the flight stand, which has the, the pin here, which goes right up between his crotch. And then you can take it and put it on this display stand. You just peg that right in there, just like so. You got the Stark Industries Red Snapper logo here right on the front. It doesn't light up or anything, although it does look very similar to the, the light up the, uh, stand that we got previously where there was a light around it. So it is a very similar look to it, but it doesn't light up or anything. And that is it for his accessories. It's, it's unfortunate, but this is a great figure nonetheless. I mean, like I said, it is a power pose figure. So it does have a little bit more limitations and doesn't have a lot of the accessories that the movie masterpiece figures have, but it's still great looking nonetheless as you can see it is a very large figure now it's listed i believe at 13 and a half inches and bringing in my iron man march 6 which is a 12 inch figure you can see that he probably is about 13 and a half he's a little bit taller than him uh, just kind of putting them side by side you can see that in addition to that size he's a whole lot more bulky which works perfectly the red snapper is a, a disaster suit so it's a whole lot more massive and powerful kind of lift debris and rubble things like that you got these claws here which are very much like the jaws of life almost but these are also used to give power to him lifting things essentially now i'll leave the the, the mark six within my grasp because i do need it for uh one of the additional features that this guy has uh so starting off first we're gonna take a look at his articulation uh there's a whole lot more here, like I said, than I anticipated. And it really impresses me. 
bringing in the Mark 42 power pose, uh, like I said, it, it had joints, but all you could do is like, it was locked in this position. So you couldn't do anything. Same thing with the arms. The legs could move like that. You can move them, but he was essentially locked in this position. Now you did have an extra leg that you could take this off and you could plug that in there to make it look like he's flying. It was something like that basically. But the, the articulation was limited. It didn't actually really allow you to pose this figure in anything that you want other than this and then that flying pose. This guy though is massively different. Uh, first, the head is on two different ball joints. You got one at the lower section, one at the upper section of his neck, so you get a nice range of motion with it. You can get him pretty much looking anywhere you want. The shoulders here rotate. Now, it does get a little bit hindered because of all the extra pieces. This piece here is on a bit of a spring, so it does flex a little bit, allowing you to bring it in and out and things like that. Uh, it also rotates at the shoulder. You can see it rotates all the way around. He bends at the elbow. But uh, it is a little bit more limited, but for a suit that's this bulky, I, that doesn't bother me really much. Uh, now his fists down here do rotate. You can see like, for example, there's the palm of it and then you can rotate it uh, around to the other side and there's the back of his hand. Um, it's kind of pointless because it's hard to get in there. This is all one piece. One thing that I really wish that it did have is the ability to actually collapse and have these uh, pistons kind of slide inward just so that you can squish the extended look up a little bit more. Uh, then let's see, does it, it doesn't rotate down here. Come down here to these claws. You can see that they got a joint here. So you got that motion and then you got a, a joint here at the tip as well. Then you can see some nice piston motion right there. One thing that you may notice is that his torso is on a little bit of a rotation. That might bug some people. It doesn't bug me all that much. I, I mean, on a more uh, movie masterpiece figure, these would probably be able to articulate. Uh, at least the, the twist is slight. Uh, but when you look at it straight on, you can see that it is a little bit twisted around. But as I said, it's a subtle twist. So it doesn't look too bad, I don't think. The hips here do move in and out, but again, you can see they only move in in and out that far. This section right here actually slides down so you can move the legs forward and back. So you can get some nice articulation there and you can see how this whole section flexes when you move that uh, thigh or leg in general all the way back. He bends here at the knee and you can see that he's got some moving parts right in there. And then you got a piston here in the back that flexes as you move his leg forward and back. Then you come down here, these little bits right here, these can lift up a little and you get a nice range of motion on a ball joint with his actual feet. Uh, nothing at the toes or anything, but again, if this was a movie masterpiece figure, I would anticipate those joints being there. This doesn't have it. Now, that's, like I said, an amazing amount of articulation that I did not expect this figure to have, especially considering the way that the first power pose figure was. But you can see that there is some limitations in it. So it's not that full movie masterpiece articulation that we're used to. For a budget figure, it's still pretty expensive. This is a $250 figure still. But when you consider this, the mass of it, all of that I really do feel contributes to a, a well-priced figure. I think $250 is just about perfect for this. If you put this into the movie masterpiece series, I could easily see this being $350, maybe to $375. So by limiting the articulation, you limit the amount of pieces and molds that are required to build this figure. So it keeps that price down. But even, even though, it is limited. You can absolutely see through the paint detail. You got this gorgeous red, a little bit lighter red than a, the red on of a lot of his suits, but it's a gorgeous red nonetheless. I mean, and you look at all the details. He still has the pistons. All those details are there. You got what look like little thrusters on much here, almost here on the back of his thigh or uh, his calves, maybe giving that little boost. And then you can see all the intricate details here in the foot, again, in the knee area. It absolutely looks like an Iron Man suit, just specific to like disaster rescue. And that's the whole idea of all of these suits, that Tony was basically sitting around trying to think of every contingency that could potentially happen so he could build a suit for it to be prepared. And I really think they did a great job of capturing this. I know the Red Snapper is a favorite for a lot of people, and I do not think this will let you down. Now he does have the, the very famous light up features. When you come to the claws right here, on the inside of this section right in here is where the switch is. So you just flip that 
let me, well, where's the switch? There it is. There's a switch and you can see lights up very nicely. Both sides do have that. So bringing this up, where's that switch? Flip that, I'm not looking at, there we go. Flip the switch and I mean, you, you can really manipulate this and get it into some good poses. It's limited, like I said. I, I want to stress that. It's not as great as the movie masterpiece ones. But the sheer fact that you can do some of these poses is phenomenal. Uh, I absolutely think it's well done and very cool. Come around here to the, uh, the back section form, and this whole back piece detaches. You've got his arc reactor. You have a new looking arc reactor, which is in this uh, sideways rectangle, which looks terrific. And then on the back of his neck, kind of you gotta reach down there. And I'm just gonna pull it. Well, no, there it is, there it is. You got his eyes that light up. So all of those lights that you've come to know and love in an Iron Man figure are essentially still there. He doesn't have any, uh, well, no, no, he does have the, the repulsors down there where you can see them, but uh, those don't light up or anything like that. Now, as I said, he does basically have a couple extra features. If you have the Iron Man Mark VII that comes with the alternate portrait of Tony Stark, you can actually come around here, you can take his head off, and because it's sunken in, you can take this and pop that in there, and you can actually put his head on this suit. Uh, now, I checked with a couple other heads, like for example, the, the Tony Stark that came with the test suit version of Tony Stark, as well as the, the mechanic version of Tony Stark. His head sculpt is different in terms of the way that the neck is done. And then if you want to, uh, you have this extra little piece here. You can take this whole thing. I think it, maybe it goes that way. How, which way do you actually go? Oh, maybe it goes something like that. You can take that, put that in there to, uh, give him that look. I mean, that is so cool. But you have that uh, head sculpt that is different. You have the one piece neck, which is what this basically needs. So if you do have that, you almost have another accessory for this. But in addition to that, one thing that the instructions don't show you, but the pictures do, that if you go to Sideshow Collectibles, is that the, the Mark VI, not so much the Mark VII, because the Mark VII has those extra shoulder pads on here. If you take this arm, you can pop this off, and you can see where the, the socket is for it. You can take that this off as well. This is, pop that off just like that, kind of angle that down, and then you can take this, and give this a nice little wedge. Make sure I got it lined up properly. There you go, it requires a little bit of a finagling, but you can actually put this on that arm as well if you really wanted to. And you can see that it kind of ma matches fairly well with the, the fist there and everything. His fist doesn't disappear. The, like I said, the Mark VII doesn't really fit this very well uh, because you've got those extra pieces here on the shoulder, which kind of hinders this big giant section right there, but you can get it on there. And that's, that's really cool. So again, you have another accessory almost for your Mark VI for the most part. And then just tab that right back in there. Come around here to the side, kind of straighten this back out, rotate that, there you go. And give that a nice little push, lock that back in there. Let's get his head back on there. You can see that it does have two sections on his head. So maybe if you had a Tony Stark, I'm not 100% sure that has just the, the hole where you can put this in there. Maybe you could do that or something, but you can see that that's his neck joint right there. But they do specifically say in the instructions, the Mark Seven extra portrait of Tony Stark. So putting that in there like that. Oh, I think I turned his light off too. Um, this thing though is absolutely incredible. I, I'm really blown away by how great he looks and really how articulated he is. As I said, I did not expect that. That was a total surprise on my part. I mean, they listed that he had all this extra articulation and they mentioned how many points he has, but getting it in hand and actually being able to manipulate it and see how many joints that he does have that do have a nice free range of motion really did blow my mind. This guy really is terrific. If you're an Iron Man fan, this is wonderful. And I really think that it's well worth adding to an Iron Man collection. If you couldn't tell, I highly, highly recommend picking this up. It's really cool to get a completely different looking Iron Man suit and not just a repaint of one. Although I would anticipate at some point in time this getting repainted and giving it a different Mark number and getting released those. I honestly think that the Mark 36 is this exact same armor but a different color. 
it's like it's orange or something like that beyond that though really love this guys i think you will too if it's, especially if you're an iron man collector in general it's a great piece and looks fantastic so if you are interested in getting this, go ahead and click on the link down in the video description. You go to Sideshow Collectibles, where this is still available and you can pick it up and add it to your collection just as soon as it releases. Beyond that, that's about it. So once again, I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. This has been Optibotamus. Keep in touch with me. Find our recent purchases as well as all upcoming video reviews all at facebook.com slash teambotamus and by following me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash optibotamus. Also, don't forget to check out my new website at optibotamusreviews.com where you can see all my videos from the previous week as well as what I have coming up for future release. And please, if you like this review, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and share this video. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.